In this video, we are back at looking at the country of Liberia. We focus on the life of Master Sergeant Samuel Do, a president whose eventual demise would lead to the onset of the Liberian Civil War, which wreaked havoc on this country. Samuel Do had risen to power after staging a brutal coup to depose the government that was made up of American Liberians, and he became Liberia's first president of exclusive indigenous heritage. It was quite ironic that on his ascendancy to power, he did so via brutal means and so would be his eventual demise. In this video, we take a look at the rise to power, eventual demise and death of Liberia Samuel Do. If you are new to this channel, don't be shy to subscribe and to click the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. Samuel Kenyon Do was born on the 6th of May in 1951. He was born in a small town called Tuzon in Grand Gede County in the southeastern part of Liberia. His parents were poor and uneducated like most rural Liberians and they belonged to the Kran tribe. Samuel Do had only accomplished primary education when he became a career soldier, presumably because of lack of other job opportunities. According to reports, he gained a reputation as a skilled sharpshooter and a hand-to-hand -hand fighter. Samuel Odo was promoted from a private to a corporal and first sergeant within two days in 1975. He would undergo training at a camp in Liberia and this camp was run by United States Special Forces or Green Berets and in 1979 he would become the master sergeant of the army. Like other indigenous Liberians, Do resented the privilege and power that had been granted to American Liberians who were the descendants of the freed American slaves who founded the colony of Liberia in 1822. The American Liberians are Liberians of African American descent. They trace their ancestry to freeborn and formerly enslaved African Americans who immigrated to Liberia in the 19th century. In 1822, the American Colonization Society established the Liberian colony on the West African coast to send freeborn African Americans and freed slaves back to the African continent. Now, instead of creating a land of liberty that made a clean break from the brutal past of slavery, the American Liberians would go on to oppress the natives of the land, denying them political rights and acting like slave masters that they had escaped from. From the beginning, the American Liberian settlers were essentially American rather than African in outlook and orientation. They retained preferences for western modes of dress, southern plantation style homes, American food, Christianity and the English language. The years of American Liberian rule were characterized by exploitation of the indigenous people who still constitute more than 97% of the Liberian population. Meanwhile, the year before Samuel Do's coup was a time of intensifying hardship for most Liberians. At the same time, there was an increasing display of wealth by the elite. The then president, William Talbot, announced an increase of the price of rice, which was the Liberian staple food. When it became apparent that Tolbert and members of his family stood to benefit personally from the price increases, thousands of Liberians stood up in a series of street demonstrations in Monrovia, the capital of Liberia. Tolbert ordered the police to open fire on unarmed demonstrators. More than 40 protesters were killed and hundreds were injured. These rice riots would create a groundswell of disgruntlement towards the Tolbert government. So in 1980, Samuel Do, then a 28-year-old master sergeant, assumed power in Liberia in a blaze of glory. In a surprise night attack on the executive mansion overlooking the Atlantic Ocean, Samuel Do and his accomplices brutally murdered William Tolbert, ending 133 years of rule by black American Liberians and their descendants. Ten days after President Tolbert met his brutal end, 13 of the most senior officials in his government were stripped down to their underwear and publicly executed on a beach in Monrovia. Having discarded William Tolbert, Samuel Do became Liberia's first president of exclusive indigenous heritage. After the coup, Samuel Do assumed the rank of general and established the People's Redemption Council composed of himself and 14 other low-ranking officers to rule the country. He would promise the people that he would return Liberia to civilian rule and initiated reforms along those lines. Casting himself as a liberator of Liberia's indigenous masses, he promised to put an end to the corrupt and oppressive domination by the American Liberian elite and to establish a more equitable distribution of the nation's wealth. A constitution that was drawn up was endorsed by the Liberian people in a referendum held in 1984. It provided for a creation of an interim national assembly. 
In the same year, 1984, Samuel Doe declared his candidacy for the presidency and founded the National Democratic Party of Liberia. He was re-elected on October 15, 1985, over his chief opponent, Jackson of Doe, no relations, of the Liberian Action Party. However, the election was surrounded by much controversy as opponents claimed that it was fraudulent. Many political leaders had been imprisoned under the infamous decree which made it a crime to criticize the head of state or his government. The Special Elections Commission was also used to frustrate the registration of political parties. For example, some parties were unable to meet the high financial requirements for registration. This political unrest culminated in a failed coup attempt in November of 1985. Samuel Doe successfully put down a widely applauded and nearly successful coup attempt, killing hundreds, mostly members of the Geo and Mano tribes from the remote border region of Nimba County. With this brutality, he had sown the seeds for his eventual downfall, but we will cover that later. With regards to foreign policy, Samuel Doe's government briefly flirted with Libya before aligning firmly with the United States. It is important to note that Samuel Doe ascended to power during the Cold War, so the United States were greatly relieved when Doe maintained the country's pro-Western stance and Samuel Doe was even invited to the White House to meet the President, Ronald Reagan. Liberia received more political and military assistance from the United States in the decade of Samuel Doe's rule than it had ever received, despite an increasingly deteriorating political climate and human rights record. The Reagan administration had maintained that they believed Samuel Doe was steering Liberia towards democracy. Until 1985, Liberia was the largest per capita recipient of United States aid in Sub-Saharan Africa. But by the time the rebels Charles Taylor and Prince Johnson moved to overthrow Doe at the twilight of the Cold War, this support had since evaporated. Meanwhile, Samuel Doe also faced severe economic challenges. Liberia would experience a sharp decline in foreign investment and an unprecedented unemployment rate of over 50%. Samuel Doe tried to boost the economy by introducing a seven-cornered dollar coin as the first official Liberian currency. However, this worsened the economy. By the end of the 1980s, Liberia had a foreign debt of over 2 billion United States dollars and was near bankruptcy. Samuel Doe's brutality alongside his favoritism of his own crime tribe would lead to his eventual demise. The excessive and brutal reprisals of the crime-led Liberian army against the Mano and Geo people in Liberia's Nimba County proved to be an important stepping stone to the civil war that officially began in December of 1989. On Christmas Eve of 1989, an alliance composed of American Liberians and Mano and Geo people united in the National Patriotic Front of Liberia invaded from Côte d'Ivoire. The National Patriotic Front of Liberia was led by Charles Taylor, a corrupt civil servant under Samuel Doe, who was born from the American Liberian father and a Gola mother. However, an internal rift between the American Liberian and tribal fighters in the MPFL resulted in a split led by General Prince Johnson from the Nimba County, who created the Independent National Patriotic Front of Liberia. The Liberian army was soon losing control over a large part of the territory, and Samuel Doe asked Nigeria's president, Baba Ginda, with whom he presumably had common business interests, for support. In August of 1990, the Economic Community of West African State, ECOWAS, sent a 4,000-man peacekeeping force to Liberia, and this peacekeeping force was known as ECOMOG. These peacekeepers succeeded in halting Charles Taylor, but they did not save Liberia's president. On the 9th of September 1990, President Samuel Doe, on a visit to ECOMOG headquarters in Monrovia, was captured by Prince Johnson. How this could happen is still unclear. A notorious vicious drunk, Johnson had himself filmed as he ordered his men to torture Samuel Doe. While he sat behind a desk with two open cans of beer, Johnson ordered his men to strip Samuel Doe. Samuel Doe kneeled before Johnson in his underwear, quivering, sobbing and begging. He was tortured, mutilated and finally brutally killed by Johnson and his men while all the gruesome details were videotaped. This tape later found its way all over West Africa and the images of the videotape shocked the people all over the world. Some of Doe's death would be the start of the Liberian Civil War. You can get more detail of this war in my Charles Taylor video which I've put in the description box down below. Samuel Doe's time in power is commonly seen as a dark period in Liberia's history. 
His 10 years at the helm, as well as the civil war that began under his reign, continue to cast a long shadow on the events in Liberia today. The nation has since made strides towards national healing, but the scars of this war still remain. Let me know in the comment section below if you found this video useful. Don't forget to like and share the video. This has been Tatenda for African Biographics. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.